Tastes like chicken. Oh. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Oh my god, she just walks the fuck up. Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Mm. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the absolute. We have a high deception. I'm worried about the DC though. Let's look at it. Oh, it's just a 10. We can do a 10. We can do a 10. Just cross our fingers. We're going to murmur a little prayer to Elastray and roll our dice. Oh, we did it. Dirty 20, y'all. Indeed. How regrettable that your meat must go unsavored. You can't talk about my meat like that. Food? Food. Not food. Friend. I like how everyone's like, mm, no, not the word that I would use. Oh no, we definitely don't want to talk about other ogres because it's gonna be like, yeah, like my sister's out back with her boyfriend. I'd be like, ah. <laughs> there, no one will ever know. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I notice you don't bear a brand of your own. I've no use for the absolute or any god. Oh. I follow two masters only, gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold. And the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss goblin give gold. We check brand. Good deal. No talk. Oh. Wait, we can recruit him? I'll think on it. You're quite the articulate ogre. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? I don't like the way you're talking about us. I don't like that at all. Perhaps we can put them to better use than killing random tieflings. <sighs> Forget goblins. You should be fighting for me. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Oh. Make me an offer. Tempt me. This man makes me so uncomfortable. Wow. I'll pay you in the flesh of the fallen. That's so wild. That's such a, like, a hard-ass drow thing to do. Yeah, you can eat all the people I kill. To be fair, typically the only people we kill are bad people. I don't like it, but it is very practical of us. And we're gaining allies, and we really need them. Oh, it would be really fun to be able to turn them on the people that they were employed by previously later in the game. Nice little twisty twist. I'll pay you in the flesh of the fallen. You'll have your fill. Oof. Whoa, look at that DC! Wow, that's such a high DC. Come on. Come on. No. A 
slip of the tongue. You meant to make a better offer, surely. Oh, so now I can only, I can only do 500 gold. What do I want to do? What do I think Belle would do if this really was a failed role? I think she'd just shrug and be like, you're lost. I have tons of money, but for her, it's a matter of pride right now. She gave him an offer. He said no. And she said, fuck you. Because she's a drow and she's feeling self-important today. I've changed my mind. The offer is off the table. Oh, but you do love to tease. I feel like what we do is we leave now. I don't like the way he's looking at us. I don't like the way he's talking to us. Alas, not so much as a nibble. Try me. Food? No, not food. Okay. So, we survived. We didn't ally, but we also didn't make an enemy. I'm gonna loot. That might be worth a look. What? What do you mean, cracked support beam? What do you want me to do with that cracked support beam? I'm trying to get up to where we can see what's above here. Are we gonna drop the ceiling on them? Interesting. Astarian. What was the Blade of Frontier's toughest kill? Ah, it was a great scrap. A hungry minotaur with a hankering for human flesh. An axe-bearing mountain of fur she was. Gave me a nasty scar. I hope you don't mind if I don't ask to see it. Oh. All right, so let's walk around a little bit. Check out a shabby wardrobe. Oh, three and one. I don't think we have three and one. All right. A is for Azuth and other gods. We read this one. We haven't. Amuntur, sun's bright light, shines the truth into man's laws. Speak his name to stop a fight, then invoke a legal clause. Beware, dread Asmodeus, both his word and promise sweet, more able to betray us than the devils at his feet. Oral is merciless and cold, the winter's icy breath. Spare her a little food and gold, so you won't freeze to death. I love that. Okay, so we're going to send it to camp because we've read it. In the next one. You should not ever pray to Baal, the savage lord of murder. His worshippers are killers all who spread his darkness further. Shantae is our mother great. Hers is the hearth and home. Our harvests on her blessing wait. Thus we reap what we've sown. Cyric is the prince of strife, god of deceit and madness. Watch for the dark sun and his lies, who will rob your bonds of gladness. I love these. I love these. All right, we were caught up on lore. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Can we get up there at all? I kind of want to see what this does, but I'm going to feel bad if it does drop the ceiling on them. Even though I, I probably shouldn't feel bad, they're hurting people. Good, not bad. Uh, I'm going to go loot this desk. I'm having a hard time. I think that it's more important that we keep our cover rather than try to kill them. Even though I think the combat would be fun. Okay. Let's... Oh, wait, 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 wait. There was a thing. Where was the thing I saw? There we go. Move me. There are actually books in the books. 
Okay. An anti-tiefling screed? Printed on the cheapest paper. It doesn't seem to have been widely read. Yeah, because it's terrible. We're going to read this in our best fantasy Karen voice. People of the Sword Coast, look around you. What do you see? A collection of gods faring human elves. Don't lump us in here with your bullshit. And dwarves are an infernal corruption of that divine image. Tieflings wearing their devilish heritage for all to see. Walk among us as if they didn't owe their existence and allegiance to the lords below. These house touch people have infiltrated our cities, our organizations, even our families. They claim to be good all they wish. Would you believe the tiger who looks at you with dripping fangs if he said he ate nothing but vegetables? No, we can see their true nature plain as day. But they are not the only evil infiltrating our world. All around I see drow. Wow! Wow! Durger, another creature that the underdog strive for acceptance. But why should you accept them when their brothers raid our countryside and steal our children? Obviously, I'm not saying they should be cast out. You're just saying that we should all die, kind of. Obviously, I am not saying we should return these delinquents to the Underdark and drive the tieflings back to the hell they came from. But be wary of these people, my friends. Be suspicious when you see them, and especially suspicious when you do not. I lost IQ reading that. That's like people are like, I'm not trying to be racist, but, and it's like. <laughs> All right, The True and Impossible Adventures of Tenebrook's Morrow, volume one. The manuscript is eye-catching, if only for its lurid and jarring color scheme. Oh, in bold. An excerpt from the true and impossible adventures of Tenebrook's Marvel. A pulp serial following the real life exploits of an inter interplanar ship's captain. The real Captain Morrow is known never to have left her native water deep and emerges from her rooms at the yawning portal only to exchange scrawled manuscripts for fresh meals and ink. She's a writer, baby! His red dragon thus dispatched. The knight had no choice but to leap from my ship, crashing to the new bride's deck even as his mount was swallowed by the eerie gloom of the astral plane's shifting tides. Faithful Knowles was upon him instantaneously, clawing and biting, alas, in vain. Astral projection thwarts even the fury of a tabaxi cabin boy and the treacherous Githyanki. Wow. Only laughed as Norse formless blows passed harmlessly through him. The knight's silver sword came out in an arc that missed Norse entirely, but neatly clipped the spiritual cord anchoring the tabaxi stalwart soul to the plane. I mourned as my faithful feline companion faded from existence, but did not hesitate. The Yankee only smirked lazily at my charge, anticipating the futile efforts of another bound by the laws of this plane. But that is not... And has never been. Captain Tenebrook's Morrow. Unlike poor Norse, I had entered this plane in my full flesh form. A fact I demonstrated by thumping the warrior solidly between the legs. <laughs> he tumbled over the new bride's rail and down into the mists. Even as a fresh horde of dragons rose from the distant dead citadel of Tunarath. I feel like this is like the Indiana Jones of Forgotten Realms fiction. A missing poster. Seems simple enough. Missing children. Maggie Terrence, Marcus Terrence, Mathen Deach, Rochelle Kirk. Oh no, are we gonna encounter, oh, and their little hopscotch, that's right. We're gonna encounter those later, aren't we? And not in a way I'd prefer. All right. No. One more book. Or we might have to move away from them to read. So, 
Will with a Y. Why? Why? That's right. But why? Why, why? A great uncle's name, my father said. But I just figured he couldn't spell. <laughs> That's very cute. Okay. Fables of Faron 5. The Boy and the Beholder. Very classic D&D. &D. One of a series of thin tomes illustrating simple lessons to readers of all ages. A shepherd's son tended to his father's flocks on the banks of the Sayantha. The days grew long and the boy grew bored. To amuse himself, he called out, Beholder, Beholder. Oh, boy who cries wolf. The shepherd came running, but there was no beholder. The boy pointed and giggled, but the shepherd scolded him. Do not cry beholder when there is no beholder. Promise? I promise, said the boy. But the next day was as boring as the last. Beholder, the boy cried, and his father rushed to his side. The boy laughed and laughed, but the shepherd only frowned and shook his head. Three days later, the boy spotted a round figure floating in the distance. It had one giant eye in the middle of its face and a mouthful of pointed teeth, thin stalks growing from it, each with an eye peeking from the tip. Beholder! Beholder! he shouted, but no one came. The beholder began to float towards him, and the boy turned and sprinted along the river. He ran and ran until he reached a high bank and could run no more. The boy cried and cowered, bracing for the beholder's deadly ray. Instead, a familiar voice said, Turn around. The boy turned. There was no beholder. Only the shepherd clad in a woolen cloak. A giant eye was painted on the front, and a toothy mouth below. Vines were sewn into the cloak's edge. You scared me, sobbed the boy. That makes us even, said his father, as he dried the boy's tears. The boy never cried beholder again. What good stories we're getting today, though. Okay, so we have to go back in here. Shut the dead tiefling. And there's a book over there. I definitely thought that was going to go differently, but it ended up going pretty well. Can we? Poor thing. Tarnish locket. The locket opens to reveal an intricate illusion of a stone tower. The words Alterel, strength, and unity are inscribed across the top. Maybe we can try talking with the tiefling's corpse. Let me finish looking around. No tastes good. And we can do that. Roth. Sausage, pork loin. This one's not tainted like the last. Sausage, grilled pork belly. Oh, love J barbecue and dry rope sausage. I feel like we always end up talking about food in some capacity. Oh, we got another A is for Azith and an old school book. Let's take those. Nice diary. Might explain what happened here. Perfect. We've got so much to read. Okay, old school book first. A weather-worn and faded school attendance book. A school's attendance log fills the ancient pages. As the pages and days progress, more and more pupils' names vanish from the entries. An urgent script. A note in the margin states that someone has to investigate what's become of the missing children and their families. That's not good. Shadowheart's attention is fixed upon the contents of an old journal. Oh! Are you okay? We... we should keep moving. This couldn't be her village, could it? 
missing children. What if... Because remember, the Selenite rites are to send the child out into the nearby woods, and if they survive, that means their god loves them and they can come home. Wild shit. But, but, we've already had the encounter with Shadowheart where she tells us about where she was rescued from said ritual, we think, from, by, I should say, by Shar's disciples. What if Shar's disciples in the area are kidnapping all these children to feed their own ranks because they know that the Selenites send them out like that? It's prime opportunity. There's no way to pin it on Shar's disciples, really, because it's not like they're coming here to do it. These children just aren't coming back from the rites. That's my theory so far. That's my theory so far. Another episode. Why does this keep happening to you? You already know as much as I do. Best ignore it. As long as it doesn't hamper us too much. Oh my gosh. And then we've got uh, seven out of our chapter book about gods. Lyra, Lady of Deception, the goddess who wears many masks. Invoke her name, avoid perception. She hides your lies and secret tasks. For joy, to Lyra you must call, and worship her through soul-filled dance. So find her presence in fest halls. Do not give idleness a chance. Lothiatar's pleasure is your pain, your scars an offering. Scourge or candle, whip or cane, can your devotion bring. We have BDSM, God. Jesus. Okay. Who has the amulet? Is it a Starian? What now? This inane shatter pains me. The tiefling's corpse stirs with the spell. Poor baby. You realize the tiefling's body has been torn open by huge hands. <sighs> so I'm not going to voice him because he's not my character. And we know who did this, but we're going to ask what brought her to this village. Strange warriors. Gold. Skin. Silver. Blade. Yeah, where did we see these warriors? Mountains. Road. Gate. Okay. Let's make sure that the ogres are the one that killed her and they weren't just eating a dead body. I think that's important to ask. So, who did this to you? Ogres. Okay. Hungry. Bloodied. Screams. Poor thing. Okay, what, this three out of our five. We'll ask her where she's from now. I think it's Elturel. Elturel. Zoro. Friend. Poor thing. We're gonna ask this last one because it's a Starion. And he is going to ask her if she has anything of value. True sight. No. Coin. Huh. Oh, fool. Poor thing. Head, head. Yeah, the, the ogres are just hanging out while we're doing all of this. Okay, we've got one more book, it looks like. Oh, a Starion ticket. Do you mind reading it aloud, darling? A faded handbill advertising the works of the Shark Tongue traveling troupe. Very cute. Though clearly old, this handbill has managed to maintain its bold print over time. For one season only, see the play that sent El Terrell's Everlight Theatre into chaos. The Sharp Tongue Travelling Troupe presents The Folly and the Fall, a tragedy in four parts. 
part one of Lost Snetheril, that great wizarding empire in humanity's age of wonder. Part two of the great mage Carsus, his brief and terrible godhood and the ruin he wrought. Part three of Netheril's fall, a thousand years of shade and Shah's subversion. Part four of Netheril's return and its shadow falling upon the land. Dang. Penned by the great bard Bregenfeg, the folly and the fall tells the true story of the flying nethery city, Fultanthar, and its dramatic return after a thousand years in exile on Shah's Plain of Shadow. See the climactic battle above Mithranor, Mithranor, rendered in stunning detail thanks to the finest thaumaturges on the coast. Direct on your village green as the sharp-tongued traveling troop makes its transit to Baldur's Gate. See it now, or face a thousand years of sorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, Myth Draenor. There's some elves there. Let's see. Oh, tastes good. Let's get going. Let's go back to the tea house and cure the dwarf. We can do that. Alright. We gotta go up this way, yeah? There we go. Never wanted the easy path. We're gonna take the long way down. Actually, it's probably about equidistant. Because if we go through the, like, bog entrance, we gotta go through her, like, inner layer. So let's get in here. Because now we have our basilisk oil. We can go save this man. I hope. I'm hoping that's how it works. Can we get in there? Wait, can we not? Okay, there we go. Very strange. Okay. Come here, dwarf boy. I got something for you. So, should I throw it on him? Where's my throw? Throw. Oh my fuck, where is the thing? It's gonna look potion-y. Did I accidentally send it away? Basilisk oil, there we go. Turn a petrified creature back to its organic farm. Good, good. Extracted from a basilisk skull, this thick gray oil swirls slowly in its container. All right. Oh, what happened? Yay, we oh, saved no. him! No. Why ain't I petrified? Oh, no. That's right. His disease was killing him. We don't have greater restoration. I got lesser restoration. Will lesser do? The hag is gone. What? How... How am I still breathing? I have the bite. What does that mean? Oh, apparently I know. Isn't Ladiger's bite terminal? Why do you think I came to the hag? It was get petrified or end up covered in my own insides. I was on death's door. No, I feel... I feel great. Are you okay? Oh. Bell is going to examine this dwarf for signs of Ludiger's bite. Oh, it's 15 DC. Elastray, guide me. We can do this. We can do this. Come on. Oh, we got it. We got it. Less. Fuck yeah. Not only is the disease gone, you see it's left no scars. An impossibility for the bite. Oh. What? But that doesn't make a lick of sense. Unless... That double-crossing, filthy, lying hag! She 
me at meat sick and then trap me in stone for kicks yeah hags do be doing that how long were you trapped like this i don't know days years oh, my, my kids were only babes when i left the stones know how old they are now oh my god Bellathine! She could absolutely say children are disgusting. I don't think she'd comment on it, though. So, Bell has... I'm not gonna go deep into her backstory for this, because it's, um... It's personal for her. Um, but... She has a... A weird past with children, so I don't think she would comment on that. Um, remember... Remember when I talked about the Dragloth? I don't... None of these are very Bell responses. Because I don't think she's going to be super chipper and whatever, but... Listen. I... I have places to be. Do you need anything else, or can we be on our way? Sorry. Now ain't the time for blathering. I... I ain't got no way to repay you. We helped out of the goodness of our hearts, right? That was very much an us thing. But, uh, I don't, I don't think she would intend to collect a debt either. Don't worry. I didn't help just to get a reward. No. What you've done for me and mine today won't be forgotten. Thank you. Like, I feel like if it were, it were a different situation, she might be like, well, you could do, and like list off something, but those specific ones weren't great for her. And it happens, right? That's, that's gonna be the difficult part of playing a video game instead of like being at the table where I can say exactly what I wanna say. It's cool. All right, so we finished that. Let's cross that off our lists. I have a, I legitimately have a like, little list of things so I don't. Oh, there's a well at Ethel's that we didn't go through? Okay, now that we're in the area. Okay, let's go back up. Let oh, that's not the way that I want to go. Wrong way, wrong way. I got turned around. I need it to be light in here again. Okay, where are the stairs that go up? There's that guy. So it should be... Yes, perfect. Whew. Everything is the same color in here. I got turned around. I wish there was a mod that shows us anytime they have new dialogue. Mm. I can try talking to them, but let's do it in the tea house. Better not be cursed. All right. Let's talk to our baby boy. Darling, I was just thinking about you. Remembering our time together, the things we've shared. <laughs> and I don't just mean that lovely neck of yours. I'm growing to like the whole package. Honestly. And you clearly like me too. So... Why? Why are we- why are we doing this in the hags? Why are we doing this in the hags place? Why are we doing this in this decrepit, terrible tea house? Baby, please. I'm just like... <laughs> I'm gonna fall out of my chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, I guess we're having this conversation here and now. I- I hope we're not gonna smash in the hags lair. What if we... Kissed in the hags house? What gave it away? I could feel it. As I was getting lost in your neck. Your little shakes of excitement. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna play this like a Toreador. And um, when you're a Toreador, typically, and you're feeding the kiss, what that's called, is pleasant. So, 
A lady never tells. You don't have to say a thing. I already know how you feel. Because I feel it too. We could take an evening to ourselves, get away from camp, get some privacy. I know somewhere quiet, somewhere intimate, somewhere we can indulge in each other. Oh my god, are we going on a date? Are we going on a date? Are we going on a date? That sounds pretty good to me. Wonderful. I just hope we don't have to wait too long before we can steal away. God. But once we can, I promise you a night you'll never forget. See you there, lover. Time to absolutely sprint to camp. <laughs> Long rest button. <laughs> Slamming it so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> we will explore the well a different time. We're going to go explore something else, if you know what I mean. So let's go get the well really quick. Okay. Fetid smell assaults your nostrils. Dead flesh lies below. A great deal of it. No, we're not drinking from the well, are you nuts? Okay. Okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go back to camp. Here we go. It might have to be at night, but I don't care. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. What can I do for you, my friend? You just called me lover. So I think what we have to do is make it nighttime. I love you. I don't think anybody else has anything. So we're going to save again. And then we're going to. Come on, come on. What are you hiding? Can you summon the dead? Bring them back? Can you, um, can you shut up and let me read? Uh-oh. Do you need some help? What? No, I'm, I'm fine. I was just perusing this little find. Will you shut up? <sighs> Forgive me. This book reads you more than you read it. What do you mean? I mean it plays with your mind. There are secrets here, but the book has spirits. They fight you every step of the way. I barely opened it when they started whispering from the shadows. Now every time I open it, the voices surge back into my mind. I can't reason with them. They exist to protect that book. Ah. Oh no, an exorcism. <laughs> I think that we want to find a way to make this work for us. Is there anything that we can do? Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to know what's lurking in here. Someone went through a lot of trouble to protect this tome. It has to be something more than a book of cantrips. Mm -hmm. Still, I doubt this will help us with our parasites. Maybe it's better to put it aside for now. Yeah, we've got a date. What are you hoping to find in there, anyway? It's a book of necromancy, full of secrets about controlling the dead, returning the dead to life, and who knows what else. Whatever's in here, it might give me an mm -hmm. edge over Casador. Mm, free me from him entirely. Although I can't make any progress as long as those spirits remember their mission. It seems to be all they know. Still, if nothing else, maybe I can beat Cazador to death with it. Oh, 
Okay, so because we're having date night, I want a better outfit. What can I do about this? <gasps> I could wear my underwear on date night. The undies is a bit forward. Like, I wish there was some in between. They look very cute, but I don't want to, like, show up at the date in my underwear. You know what I mean? I don't want to take anybody else's clothes and put them on my body because I don't want to cosplay one of our companions on my date. Oh, uh, I guess we pour clothes back on. We'll be in our underwear soon, hopefully. <laughs> she says. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Butts. Alright, here we go. Hello, my dear. Wait, why is it not daytime? Why is it not daytime? Do I have to go to bed for it to be daytime? Okay, I was like, <gasps> okay, 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 that's fine. Let me make sure that we haven't missed anything with anybody, because I'll feel really bad. Speak. If we like miss. Okay, okay. Will, hurry. Gotta hurry. <laughs> well met. Okay. What's on your mind? You don't want to know what's on my mind. That's not a story you want me to paint for you right now, babe. Later, though. Later, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Will, hurry! I have a vampire and I need to seduce. Hey, yeah. Hi, and Carl, like, I love you so much. May the darkness protect you. Okay, this was what I was worried about. That we were gonna have some additional dialogue that we needed to do. Your wound is causing you too much pain, Shadowheart. There must be a way to deal with it. Pain is the gauntlet that all who love Lady Sha must endure. Only her embrace can truly heal me. To try and salve myself would do nothing but shame me in the Night Singer's eyes. Night Singer. Sounds vaguely familiar. What if your wounds pain you at the wrong moment? It could cost all of us dearly. Drow pragmatism. We're not gonna charm person, she's our friend. Nice, nice. Perhaps you're right. But there's little we can do about it just now. Maybe a way will present itself in time if Lady Shah wills it. All right, babe. We, we talked about it. Okay. Peepaw, you don't have anything for me, right? Oh, no, you're gonna make me fix dinner for everyone? Um, okay. Um... Poutine, because that sounds delicious. Um, um, let's do some Roth. Um, poutine, yeah, 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 Roth is fine. I'm just like, I'm not thinking about this. Well, we've got four points left, maybe some wine. Yes, perfect. We're having poutine and Roth, roast and wine. Delicious, date night dinner, date night dinner. A quiet evening for once. Perfect for two people who'd like to take some time to themselves. If you catch my meaning. And I do mean sex, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting long enough. Oh, I, I love that it's like, I'm going to be romantic and entrancing. But just to be clear, I do mean sex. <laughs> oh my god, a starian. All right, but where will we go? <laughs> Let's find our own little piece of nowhere. Somewhere we can lose ourselves and forget all this madness. There's a secluded place nearby that should do nicely. Wait until the others are asleep, then come and find me there. I'll see you then. 
Indeed you will, my love. I can't wait. <laughs> this... There you are. I've been waiting. Waiting since the moment I set eyes on you. Waiting... to have you. You can't see Belle blushing. But she is. You don't have me yet. Don't I? You're here. And I don't think you want to talk. I think you want to be known, to be tasted. And what do you want? What do any of us want? Pleasure. Yours. Mine. Our collective ecstasy. That's what you want, isn't it? To lose yourself in me. Belle inclines her head just slightly. A smirk forming across the length of her lips. I thought so. <sighs> Val is going to roll playfully and offer up her neck. Gotta be careful. I do get to talk about them. I wasn't expecting that. Poor thing. So, scarification can have magical properties in D&D. I'm nervous about what they might mean. He didn't leave us. He probably just got up a little bit earlier. Remember, we don't have to sleep, really. We just trance. And, I mean, like, we literally do not sleep. So trancing is just kind of like idling away. You can literally read a book while you while you trance. Not staying for a cuddle. You sleep light. I thought you'd be exhausted after last night. Oh, I head cannon that you can sleep if you want to because it's like an indulgence, but you don't need it, right? Did you enjoy it? It felt like you weren't fully there. I was holding back a little, it's true. I didn't want to lose control. Delicious as you were, I didn't want to go too far. Now, shall we get on? I want to go before anyone else thanks me for saving their tails. <laughs> if you're comfortable with it. I wanted to ask about your scars first. Why did you get them? It's a poem. A gift from Cazador. He considered himself quite the artist and used his slaves as a canvas. He composed and carved that one over the course of a night. He made a lot of revisions as he went. You recall the sharp, complex lines of the script. It was written in the language of the Hells. Look at how nice her butt is. She's got such a cute little butt. 
She's so pretty. Why did he write it in Infernal? Infernal? I... Who knows? The bastard was insane. <laughs> now let's go. We've wasted enough time already. Oh. Sorry, babe. Notice he didn't know that it was written in Infernal, because he's never seen it. Can't see the mirror. And he doesn't understand the language enough. You know, sometimes when people scratch things on your back, you can tell what they're spelling out. But it's in a language he didn't understand. He doesn't know the language, so... We just told him that the scar he's had on his back for, what, several centuries? Potentially? Is in a language he doesn't even understand. I do feel like having sex out in the wilderness would be a big pain because you just gotta pick all the foliage off of you. Oh no, if if Peepaw caught us, I'd be so embarrassed. No, oh my god, that's such a good point. The tadpoles, everybody knows. Oh no, everybody knows we were smashing. I mean, I feel like Belle's like, whatever. We gotta title it. Oh, it won't let me do the brackets. There we go. <laughs> I hope that each and every one of you has a wonderful rest of your day or night. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Don't forget, we'll be playing this again this weekend because my dungeon master and I, the individual who runs all my D&D games and my Vampire the Masquerade games, is playing this with me on co-op. And we're having a really good time. We're doing a lot of the same role playing. Um, we're playing our characters from Curse of Strahd. And it's it's really, really great. I'm loving it so much. Um, we are, we up the difficulty too. Thanks for watching. For more content, you can check out these videos or my stream on Twitch or my reaction content on TikTok. All the links are in the description. Have a great rest of your day.